Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to a Starseed Transmission. We are tuning into the Hadarians for this one, and I was feeling them all morning. I was so excited. I was like imagining doing this reading in my head all day, and I was really excited to get my house clean so I could do it, because I can't do readings if, if, my, if my apartment is dirty. And man, then I don't know what happened. Something Something has been trying to derail me, and I'm sharing this because... If it's happening to me, it's happening to you guys. We're we're all on the same bandwidth. This is a collective experience where we are trying to tune. We are naturally tuning into our own frequency of excitement and love and just joy of being in the world. But then things keep trying to bring us down, um, derailing us really like... I got up to do the to do this reading and then I got a bunch of emails from work and I had to deal with a bunch of work stuff and then I had to deal with a bunch of you know banking stuff and then I was getting phone calls from people that were trying to whip up a panic and it was just uh <laughs> and it was just so disresonant so something is trying to bring us down but of course it can't they can't whatever this disresonant energy is can't actually bring us down not not if we don't let it so <laughs> keep tuning back into your most optimal highest desired frequency that is what we need to be doing and as i'm getting more into this i can feel myself settling back down i was really agitated i actually pulled out i couldn't even decide what deck i wanted to use i kept changing my mind um and then i came back to what i was originally going to do so if you feel like people or forces are convincing you to try like if you were set on a course of action and then people are for or forces are changing your mind be really careful about that because it you might find that if you need to just tune back into what you're you were originally going to do and that is actually the most resonant thing for you to do so okay i had so many things i wanted to share with you guys and then they're all gone all out of my head because <laughs> because of all these distractions so Let's just get into the cards and then I'm sure whatever messages I had been like saving up for you guys, if they're supposed to come out, they'll come out in the cards. So right in the middle in our center selves is this desire card. This is a lot of Capricorn energy. This deck is really non-traditional. It shouldn't really be read as analogous to the, you know, Rider Waite tarot, but this is clearly it has elements of the devil card. We have the goat here the sea goat and all of this fiery fiery energy this is really capricorn and that means a lot to me because i have a lot of capricorn placements in my chart and this to me is all about pinning your intention on what is most resonant to you what you desire most and this is not um this is not like the the shameful desire you know in so many religions and even secular culture, we have learned to be ashamed of what we desire or that desiring things is bad or it's low frequency or it is sinful or that, you know, you need to be non-attached. Well, no, <laughs> no, especially not for Hadarians because the Hadarians are such a high, high frequency of ecstasy that is the best word i can think of to describe the hadarian frequency is it's ecstatic yeah it's love and it's unconditional love but it's not the unconditional love of you know um <laughs> it's not like a monk sitting on a mountaintop meditating and just feeling that oneness and that gentle flowing peaceful love the hadarians are high excited fast ecstatic love ecstasy they they feel ecstasy and they experience that all the time um okay now now i can feel myself getting back into this energy this is good this this card this is the center issue um i'm feeling really inspired to share with you guys my my personal memories of living in hadar and the really exciting thing is that some of you were are really my soul sisters some of you are my soul family um not to exclude any guys watching this but i've actually been shown my soul, my Hadarian soul sisters, the ones that are not incarnated right now, have shown me that 
Um, we're so connected that when one of us incarnates as a specific gender, either male or female, then we all do at the same time. Um, so we have had lives as men all together. And right now we're all women because we are one at a time. So men watching this, you're still my Hadarian soul family, but you were of a different collective. So, you know, obviously there were lots of different collectives on Hadar and you were just part of the more extended family. So we're all part of the same, uh, big happy family because Hadar really was a big happy family, but, um, this will resonate most deeply with some of you really are. Um, I've been meeting some of you in private readings are my deepest, deepest soul family. We were literally part of the same collective on Hadar. And it was, it's really crazy. When I first got the download of this memory, I couldn't even believe it, but it has been really profound for me. So what I remember is being part of a collective consciousness where I was entirely telepathically and emotionally and energetically enmeshed with the other beings that they feel like my sisters to me. They resonate like my sisters. And we were actually part of the water. Like sometimes I think of it as like we were like water sprites, but we were literally our bodies were made of water and we were this collective consciousness that just shared thoughts, shared feelings. Just we were completely one thing. We still had individual aspects of personality and individuality and, and different aspects of consciousness but it was like imagine like a disco ball like you know like a really multifaceted sphere and imagine like if each little panel on the disco ball had a different face we were like that <laughs> we were like one greater consciousness with like a bunch of different points of smaller consciousness and yeah like a school of fish we ran around <laughs> together and I have a memory of shaping part of the water that was my body into the shape of a starfish and like skating around on the water. And I would just run around, you know, as my little water creature self, <laughs> just feeling love for everything, feeling ecstatic love for everything. I'd go up to a tree and be like, oh my God, tree, I love you. And go up to some other animal and be like, oh my God, animal, I love you too. And it was just, that was all I could feel. That was all we felt all the time. And it was just this cacophony of all of these beings that were one being just feeling this flowing and flowing and flowing feelings of ecstasy. And uh, so some of you were part of that water um, collective consciousness with me. And some of you were also on Hadar just as a different collective. And I actually remember leaving Hadar. It was the last place I lived before Earth. And I don't remember the invasion. I don't remember anything, what had happened to the planet. But I remember that there was a threat and I knew we had to leave and we, cause Hadarians couldn't fight back. <laughs> we couldn't, you just live in this like state of ecstasy. You can't fight back. So we just had to leave. And I remember thinking, okay, well we're made of water so we can travel. We can freeze ourselves onto a comet and we can travel that way. And I literally remember falling, like, I don't know how we got ourselves onto a comet, but I remember being like what the part of the water stuck to this comet and freezing. And as I was freezing and as we were like blasting off <laughs> into space, it's like, I know, I know this is crazy guys, but I have such a strong memory of it that, uh, I just remember feeling determination is what I felt. I just, I would, I was like this little point of consciousness on this comet, this like frozen water on this comet. And I was just so determined. I was like, yes, we, we're going to do this. Like we can, we got this guys. We got this. We can do it. Ooh, I was just like this little determined little water sprite. <laughs> and that feeling of determination was a new feeling for me because all I had ever experienced was this ecstatic love. And, and now that we are here, somehow we made it here and we started incarnating here. And some of us have been incarnating here. The interesting thing is that of all the Hadarians, most of them are waiting. They're not incarnated yet. They are waiting because Earth is really foreign. Uh, li living in this separated state as a human, so separated, so separated from your family, is so foreign and so difficult. And it's just so polarized here. And the Hadarian energy just can't take that. So those of us who who are incarnated now are actually we're like the forerunners. We're, we're, we're avant-garde. We volunteered to go first to basically figure out how to be a human. And we are teaching our Hadarian family that are waiting to incarnate for the first time. They're waiting for to figure out because they're watching us. They're learning from us. They're figuring it out with us. And they're waiting until 
the frequency on the planet rises up to a level that is closer to their frequency. So congratulations if you are from Hadar and you are here because you have survived a lot and you volunteered to go first and to come down into this uh, difficult, challenging experience and learn to be a human in separation. You are teaching your Hadarian soul family so much. They are with you all of the time. And the more you can raise up your frequency, the more you can tune into frequencies of love and especially that like high frequency, really quick vibrating ecstatic energy, the more you can, you'll be able to feel them and the more you'll be able to communicate with them on a conscious level. Okay, so that was a pretty long tangent all off of this desire card. But look at this. Look at the center here because it's desire and then emotions is our spiritual journey. This is your spiritual journey. It is to tune into your emotions. Just like I was saying, we are tuning up. I, I actually just saw like a violin, you know, turning the tuning pick on a violin or you could think like a guitar and tightening the string, raising the frequency, to, um, moving getting everything tuned up and so that everything is attuned to higher pitches. I was actually thinking about how um, people have been wondering why we don't know more about the Hadarians. Why don't we hear about them more? Why is everything about the Palladians and the Arcturians and the Syrians and yada, yada, yada? What about the Hadarians? Well, part of that from what I've seen is that they are just <laughs> like, they have a very specific high frequency and so far on earth, we just haven't been near that. So they've still been around us. They've still been with us, but it's been too, too much of a separation, too much of a gap. So that even though they're here, even though they're always with us, I can, my sisters are always around me. I know that, but I don't always notice them consciously because they're, we're just too far separated. It's like, um, if we were to use the metaphor of human hearing and sound frequency, right? The Hadarians are a, a pitch that is so high that we can't hear it. It is beyond our hearing. The human ear can't hear it. You know, maybe it'd be a sound that only dogs can hear, but maybe, you know, maybe they're even beyond that. It's something that we can't hear. So, you know, luckily with our energy frequencies, we can tune up our, our receptors. We can tune our strings. We can tighten that tuning peg and tune ourselves so that we can reach their level of emotion. And that is exactly what we're doing here is a 10 of air. This card is all about nothing but your own individual sovereignty. This is letting everything that is not authentically you fall away. For, for us, for you guys, and for me, that includes all of these fear-based frequencies, all of your shadows, because you guys have been, we've all been working through our shadow in different ways and different times. And all of that stuff, all of that gunk, all of that crap that we don't need anymore, it's all falling away. And as we do that, we actually find that we are, the frequency of our soul is much more ecstatic than we thought it was. You know, we, you might have thought of yourself as somebody who was really rational or somebody who was just really grounded and down to earth or somebody who just didn't have a lot of feelings, somebody who just is numbed out you know, you're having your human experience. So that was a paradigm you lived through, but the most authentic frequency of your soul is a much higher, uh, more purely love-based frequency. And you're starting to notice that you're starting to realize, wow, like all the things I thought about myself, that wasn't really me. That was like gunk I picked up. It's like walking through a bog, you get all this mud stuck to you. And if you walk through the bog long enough, you might forget, you know, what your legs actually actually look like. When you finally get to take a bath and all that mud dried out mud gets off of you, you realize, wow, that's what my legs look like. It's kind of like that. We're shedding away a lot of this crap we've picked up um, from, you know, living all of these human lives. Yes, exactly. Our energetic health is this eight of air. You can see it's this angelic being stabbed in the hand bleeding. This is knowing that there's something we have to sacrifice or let go of, or sometimes we have to go through pain in order to purge it and let it go. This is like, can, can you feel that? <laughs> can you feel that dagger going into your hand? It's, it's a card of sacrificing 
something difficult. I really see it as sacrificing your ego because of course um, if you're shedding away a lot of these layers that you've picked up and you're tuning yourself up to higher frequencies of love then of course you're losing some of your ego and we don't typically like to do that because we came to earth to develop our ego. <laughs> we came here and we developed our ego to keep ourselves safe and to protect us and to just it's another aspect of the game right ego isn't bad it can be fun it's something to do but now we're entering a paradigm where we're getting rid of some of it let's say you know we peel that away <laughs> layer by layer by layer so yeah some i just i can i can feel that dagger <laughs> in the palm of my hand okay over here in our ambitions we have the four of air this four of air is all about it's almost like cleaning house it's getting your shit together <laughs> it uh and it's funny, the guidebook literally talks about how it is literally cleaning your house. And so I laughed when it came out because like I was saying at the beginning of the video, I wanted to do this reading all day, but I literally had to clean my house before I started because it, it, I'm filming this on a Monday and, you know, I had a little bit too much fun this weekend and my house was a disaster, my apartment, but uh, I had to get everything all clean. You know, I never actually really do like smudging or, you know, sage and I never really cleanse energetically because I always feel like all I really got to do is open up the windows and clean and that makes me feel more cleansed than any amount of sage burning <laughs> can right so I really had to clean house to set to make room for this to set the space um and so you <laughs> you guys might be doing that literally but on a more energetic level it is cleaning house exactly what I was saying with these yeah these these three cards in those diagonal line here all kind of getting at the same thing of clearing out your ego, clearing out any bits and pieces of other people's egos, things that you've learned, things that you've picked up, all the mud you've picked up, all of that's got to go. You're energetically clearing out your meridians and your chakras and your hara line and all of that is getting cleaned out. And that is really making way for abundance. This is in our limitations and karma position which is interesting um i know i have certainly had energetic blocks that were blocking my abundance uh and i'm really starting to realize that, that is a ancestral thing uh for me you know my family has been farmers since the dawn of agriculture i was the first person in thousands of years to not grow up on a farm <laughs> and you know not a lot of not a lot of abundance put it that way and the last few years of my life have been really blocked abun in, ab in terms of abundance. So this, finally we're clearing that out. Finally. And I, I laughed when I pulled this because I pulled the Ten of Pentacles for myself this morning. And finally, as we go through that energetic clearing I was just talking about, we are clearing out these energetic blocks that are getting in the way of our abundance. And this is like a huge big deal. This isn't just like, oh, you know, now you get to live, you know, you, now you're going to have more money and have a nicer place to live as a human. No, it's not just that. That is going to be the more superficial manifestation of it. Really, this is like a whole karmic soul cycle for you. And for a lot of you, probably your ancestors as well. And think about this. This is, um, this is a Hadarian reading. This reading isn't just for Hadarians. Anybody can watch this, but I'm assuming if you clicked on this, you're almost certainly from Hadar. So, this goes all the way back to Hadar, I would say, for us, for those of us who are from Hadar. And we had a loss of abundance. We lost our entire planet. Our entire planet was invaded and taken from us and we had to flee. And I think we've been, whew, we have been working through that, of course, among other things. Most of us are from other planets as well. But that is one strand of this. That is one strand. So in coming into your abundance now that is healing your soul's journey all the way back to Hadar and yeah down here in your shadow position look at this three of fire this this dude with the you know symbolic stick with the bag hanging off he has been on a journey he has been on a journey this is something that I, I wonder about a lot when we all fled Hadar well we either died there or we fled for those of us who fled that is interesting implications, doesn't it? We just up and left. We didn't we didn't try to fight. We didn't try to make a stand. I mean, I don't know if that necessarily would have been better. 
But we were essentially incapable of fighting. So we just fled. We just took off like, like this guy. We packed our bags literally and left. This is in our shadow, remember. So that is another thing we are clearing out. I feel like that is probably coming up in some area of your life. The way it manifests is going to be different for everybody, obviously. But take a look in your life to see what kind of problem or challenge you instinctively avoid you go oh that obstacle is coming train dodge and you just dodge it um and you've done that probably for lifetime after lifetime after lifetime now i think you you're now you're coming to confront it there's something that you instinctively run away from and you are finally having to face it and this doesn't need to be that big of a deal because as we tune ourselves up, if we, if we, as we tune that tuning peg um, and we get into these more like lighter levels of frequency, you know, these energy patterns don't need to be confronted on this like horrible bogged down like earth human level. You know, you can you can watch these patterns unfold in a lighter way. You know, you don't necessarily if you just uh, this is not. This example isn't about you guys, it's just the easiest example I could think of but imagine somebody who has always been every every single one of his lives he has to he feels like he gets forced into stealing in order to feed himself but and he convinces himself that he didn't have a choice that he had to steal and then and so every life he he steals and he steals and he steals and then one life finally he has to you know get he has to balance that out. The law of cause and effect comes into play and, you know, event and people start stealing from him, stealing from him, stealing from him, <laughs> stealing from him. And, you know, maybe he gets caught for something and he goes to jail. And that is that is sort of the one to one balancing. But eventually we can get to the place where we don't need to play these out level for level if we understand what is happening energetically. So this guy, if he understood, wow, for like a 100 lifetimes, I've been nothing but a thief. If he confronted that, understood it, and then took steps on a, on a, on his own to make amends, to work through that energy pattern, to forgive himself, to forgive others, and to understand that he never actually was forced into stealing. He chose to steal, you know, that he just decided to view that as a, to view it in that way in order to make it, to make an excuse for himself. Then he could clear out that karma without actually going through the whole rigmarole of having people steal from him and then going to jail and yada, yada, yada. So it's that kind of thing. There's something that we are confronting and we are able to work through it because we're confronting it with open eyes and we understand the larger energetic pattern. Okay, moving on to over here, our strengths. Yes, it's the mother. It's the mother. This is the divine feminine coming in. Whether you're male or female, this is your divine feminine aspects coming in. And this is going to help so, so much with tuning into healthy aspects of what you desire and going on this journey of tuning into your emotionality in a way that is more effective for you. I feel like there's something. Okay. Let me try and articulate what, I, what I'm getting here. You guys are all obviously really intuitive, really psychic, and you're probably trying to develop your soul gifts more and more every day, right? You guys are all on a spiritual path and we all want to go, how, how do I, hear my guides. I want to have telepathic conversations with my guides. I want to see my guides like manifest in front of me, stuff like that. You know, we all want to go like, you know, guides or soul family or passed on loved ones or who or your angels or whoever it is for you. You want them to like literally talk to you, like appear before you <laughs> and talk to you. Of course we want that. And because we know that it's possible, but why is it not happening? Um, and <sighs> part of the problem is that we have this bias. We want things to, that is actually that desire to have it, to have our guides manifest in a more obvious way is actually just a symptom of our human bias to our human perception, okay? Uh, 
we as humans have learned that things you can literally see with your eyes and literally hear with your ears and literally touch, those are the only things that are real and those are the only things that matter. But we're really being invited to tune into our subtler senses. For example, you might think, oh, you know, I was meditating and I saw, I, I saw something, I saw a light being, or I saw mem what I thought were memories of my past lives, but then you think, oh, you know, maybe I was just imagining it. You know, I just saw it in my imagination. It didn't actually appear to me before my eyes, like, you know, like a full-blown hallucination. It was just in my head. It was just in my imagination. There is no difference. <laughs> There's no difference between your imagination and, you know, seeing something in your head and seeing it with your eyes. That is, that is just the human experience. You know, your soul doesn't have eyes. Your soul doesn't have ears. They would all be experienced on an energetic level with your you know, with your subtle senses. So if you're just, for example, if somebody is frustrated that their guides aren't talking to them in a more obvious way, all you have to do, they are talking to you all the time. Your Hadarian soul family, either, you know, if you were my soul sisters or if you are another collective from Hadar, your Hadarian soul family is talking to you all the time, all the time. They're always with you, always surrounding you, just embody, like imbuing you with so much love and they are communicating all the time. You just have to learn to notice and it can be subtle, right? Um, a lot of the time it is just a feeling. I typically don't hear the Hadarians. I hear, sometimes I hear other guides or other beings I'm connected with, but the Hadarians, I almost never hear them. I've only heard them three times. Um, so you got to pay attention to really subtle feelings, changes in your feeling, changes in just weird sensations in your body that you might, um, right off is just like a weird ache and aches and pains. Pay attention to when they're happening. Pay attention to your own thoughts. So often, so, 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 so often we are hearing our guides in our heads when we think it's just our own thoughts, you know, your, your inner monologue, the voice in your head. If you start paying attention and you ask for, you know, ask, just, just ask, set the attention out there to develop this skill. You can start to separate your own thoughts from the thoughts of your guides. And, you know, for, for example, if you're walking down the street, you're thinking about something and then a song pops into your head. <laughs> a lot of the time, that song, whatever lyrics you heard, those are your guides, right? That could be the Hadarians sending that in for you. Um, but especially with the Hadarians, in, at least in my experience, of course, for you guys, it can be entirely different. This is all entirely individual. But just, for, just as my personal example, um, I feel the Hadarians like literally swirling around me. Like just like 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 magical sparkles just swirling all around me whenever I get really really excited. Actually, the apartment I live in right now, when I was shopping around for apartments, um, when I w walked into this one, I just got so excited because it just seemed so nice, and I could feel the Hadarians, my Hadarian sisters, like swirling around me, and it was like sparkly, and I was so excited, and they were so excited, and it was just like ah, and I knew they were saying this is where you're supposed to be. This is it. This is the apartment for you. And so like I walked in and I felt that and I felt them telling me that this is what this is it. This is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to live here. I was like sold on it before I even checked it out. And then as I started walking around and walking around the whole apartment complex, I started I started remembering seeing the whole place in my dreams. They had sent this this apartment to me in my dreams like months ago and I had totally forgotten until I saw it. Um so, you know, they can be talking to you like that. Deja vu, stuff like that. And just those feelings of excitement and feeling of energy swirling around you. It can be like that. And holy crap. Yeah. Look, <laughs> our highest potential is perception. Perception. Open up the doors of perception. That is what is happening here. This, I also see this as really an activation to, <laughs> man, to like your whole, your whole light body opening up the doors of perception. Um, I don't know if any of you have had pains in your ears lately. My ears have been hurting for like two months. If you remember having ear infections as a kid, that kind of pain that has been going on and off in my ears and it has been bothering, bothering me for a bit while there. I was worried, is something wrong? Like, should I see a doctor? But it's just, it's been going on and off and I don't have any other problems and I realized that it was my ear chakras opening up and I'm starting to hear, hear things and <laughs> just all of that. So if you guys are having any, uh, anything like that, that, that could be part of like a chakra opening up, um, a sense coming in, 
um, somebody might actually be seeing starting to be able to see ultraviolet that that can actually come in if you start to see sunlight if you're ever outside and, and you feel like you can literally see the sunlight that's happened to me uh, back in 2012 that used to happen to me i could see the sunlight it was like it was like crystallizing in front of me that is you're seeing starting to see more light frequencies i that that stopped that stopped for me <laughs> in 2013 but so i haven't seen that since but i know that can happen so just yeah the doors of perception are opening wide 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 as we get in tune with our get in tune with our soul frequency getting in tune with our soul frequency that is closer to the hadarians we're rising more to their level and okay the last two cards here <sighs> this is this is kind of complicated okay this is in the love position this is the five of fire it's a lot like the five of wands as you can see it is these two muscular masculine beings full of fire it is really aggressive but it's also kind of passionate I'll let you guys look at this card but there's definitely a level of conflict here but down here in the healing position is the love card so love in conflict healed by love anybody who's been having conflicts with people that they love i think the message here is that for most of you that will be solved by <laughs> it's almost like The way to fix this conflict is to just love them more <laughs> love them more and this is really complicated because you know if you're in a relationship with somebody and they just can't get the shit together can't get the shit together and they're just a mess all the time and they're dragging you down and they just seem to be you know maybe they're even addicted to something and they're just you know almost becoming toxic and even though you love them at some point you got to cut them loose right that is a decision everybody has to make personally at what point do you have to cut people out who are just ruining your life right you do not have to consent even though you love them you do not have to consent to continually have your life dragged down by them but on another level there is some sometimes you can actually fix your relationship problem by <laughs> essentially opening yourself up to just being an overflowing fountain of love and this is i think you guys see how this is complicated right because we all know about the empath narcissist axis right where the empath really understands what has hurt the narcissist and understands why they act that way and then the narcissist is just feeding off the empath but the empath is like oh i can help you heal but the narcissist just ends up totally annihilating that and it's just it's just a total total mess right and the only solution in that kind of situation is to get out of it <laughs> get out of it so to just be clear if anybody is in an empath narcissist situation you you can't heal them though that that person needs to go on a separate journey and they need to be healed separately and you know get out of that but i don't really think that's here I, like I, I, in spiritual stuff i hear so much talk about this empath narcissist thing but i've never really resonated with that i've never been in that kind of relationship i mean thankfully right um so and i think there is this tendency for people especially spiritual type of people to as soon as you talk about a relationship problem and as soon as you say oh so and so won't get a job or <laughs> so and so isn't like giving me what i need there's this tendency to say just drop them like a hot potato <laughs> like just cut it loose they're, they're being a narcissist and they're dragging you down and they're not you know rising to your frequency and they're just using you and draining you and feeding off of you but that's not always the case that is not always the case i think a lot of the time we falsely or like wrongfully accuse somebody who's just going through a low period as being a narcissist like in in the context of a relationship you know that's and it's not always that so if you're 
and this doesn't have to be romantic. This can be any type of, you know, interpersonal dynamic, but I think there's a level of discernment going on here to figure out if you are, if this person is a narcissist, yeah, drop them like a hot potato. But if they're not, if they are just somebody who's going through their dark night or going through a challenging period or going through some kind of karmic cycles, that is when you are being called to step up and overflow, to, to let your love flow. And as Hadarians, we are uniquely able to do that because we have this high high frequency of love. We remember that we can tune into that. A lot of us have been entirely separated from that. So many of us have basically cut, had to like cut that off, like put implant a block in ourselves so that we could go through some of these human lives and some of those horrible experiences we've had here as humans. So even if you don't think of yourself as an empathic person or as a very feeling person, that's just because you chose to cut that part of yourself off. And if you're watching this video, you're either already in the process of pulling out that block of lifting that veil and getting back to yourself or that, or this is when it starts for you. It starts for you now. And as you go on, you're just going to get more and more in tune with your ability to, to heal through your overflow of love. And I'm reminded of one other thing uh, uh, concerning this. It's, discerning the difference between energetic vampirism and just feeding off of the energetic overflow. You know, we all know about energetic vampires. It's those kind of narcissistic people who like plug into you and suck your energy right out of you. That's bad. Nobody wants that. But <laughs> there is an, there's another way to feed off of ambient energy. For, for me, um, I really like going to shows like metal shows, like the more intense, like I love to mosh, like throw me right in a mosh pit. And it's, oh, it's so awesome. That is, that, that is like almost like an ecstatic experience for me because the energy is so high. And as long as you're with a good crowd, like where I'm from, the crowds are always really good. You know, if you go down in the mosh pit, three people picking you back up right away. It is actually like a loving experience, even though you're all, you know, bouncing each other around and, it, it, you know, getting crazy. But if the intention is right, if the crowd is good, it can be a really loving experience, oddly enough. And I love that because there's so much energy getting released into the room. You know, we got the music going and got the crowd going crazy and you got the mosh pit, you know, just going nuts. And it is so, that is so, um, it quenches a thirst. Like I, I, I can absorb all that energy and it is almost like getting high. Like I almost get into a feeling like I'm, you know, on drugs, even though I'm stone cold sober. Um, like after a really good concert, I will be walking home and I will just, you know, be up in the clouds feeling so amazing, feeling on cloud nine, feeling like I'm high, even though I'm not. And somebody might go, you know, oh, that's just energetic vampirism. You fed off of all those people. Well, no, no, I didn't. I didn't feed off of anybody. I was just absorbing and enjoying and using the ambient energy that was released into the room, ambiently into the room. It's like feeding off of sunlight. You know, does the sun care <laughs> that plants are down here doing like absorbing sunlight and using photosynthesis to get energy? No. In fact, the sun is probably pretty happy about that, right? That's what the sun wants to do. Well, one of the things I think the sun would like to be doing, knowing that other beings are using his energy to, to grow, right? So it's like that. Um, so if if there is a way that you guys absorb and enjoy and feed off of ambient energy, know that that is not energetic vampirism because it's only vampirism. And it's only bad if you're actually stealing it from out in, from somebody, right? If it's just out there bouncing around in the room like sunlight would then you're just absorbing and enjoying. You're just resonating with that. And you're allowing, it's almost like you're just tuning into that energy and you're allowing that level of energy to raise your vibration. And it all comes full circle because what do Hadarians do? Like I said earlier, people ask me like, why don't we know more about the Hadarians? Why don't more people talk about them? And I think it's because they don't, they're not like obviously active in the way that other types of star collectives are. You know, the Arcturians are all super into their missions and they're all healers and stuff. And they're like the mission, mission, mission. Um, and Palladians are all about, you know, learning about sorrow and teach, teaching people to heal emotionally. And, you know, we could go on. The Hadarians don't, 
have a like particular physical mission. That doesn't mean that you guys as Hadarians can't have a mission because you're not only from Hadar, you're from other places as well and you're a whole complex being with your own agendas and blah, 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 blah. But like the Hadarian collectives themselves, you got to remember they're just this high frequency of ecstasy. If you're a being that only, <laughs> if you're a collective of beings that only experience ecstasy, well, that's not very practical on human earth terms, right? So what is, what, what is that? What do they do? What are they here to do? What are we here to do? Frequency holders. The Hadarians hold that frequency of ecstasy. That is it. They hold it so that everybody else can tune their turning pig and tune up and up and up and up and up all the way until they can also feel that frequency of ecstasy. Okay, guys, <laughs> I just felt myself deflated like I had been popped by a balloon, but in a good way. I I know the video is off to a little bit of a rough start and I feel like I've been ranting a lot, but I hope that you guys got something out of this. <laughs> And I think I'm going to end it there. I, could, I can feel like the message is closing off and everything kind of getting back to normal. And so I need to go go back to my day and do some of that, um, you know, practical, pragmatic cleaning and organizing and uh, grounded human stuff. So I hope you guys can also, once after you tune into the Hadarian ecstatic frequency, I hope you can also bring it back down and don't forget to get grounded. Don't forget to be grounded with Gaia and go about your human life in a grounded way because when you reach up into those high frequencies you also need to have really deep deep roots like the tallest trees have the deepest roots right so <laughs> i love you guys so much thank you so much for tuning in and co-creating this reading for me and i'll see you guys later bye